Hi, everybody. Um, this is Logos here. I will be taking you through numbers 11 through, I think, 20. Yes, all the way at the end of this review packet, which involves a lot of the trig. So let's get started, shall we? Um, so numbers 11 and 12 are asking you to solve each triangle, which means you want to find all missing sides and angles. And there's a lot of different ways to do these problems and different methods, so I'm going to talk about a lot of them here. So if I looked at this first triangle, we need to find two missing angles and a missing side. Um, I'm just going to go in alphabetical order. So let's say that I wanted to find x first. I would say if you have two sides and you want to find a third, the Pythagorean theorem is probably the best way to do that. Um, and we want to keep our answers exact if possible. So if we did 13 squared plus x squared equals 16 squared, we would get 169 plus x squared equals 256. Subtract over the 169, we would get that x squared equals 87. And if I take the square root of both sides, we technically have two answers, plus or minus 87, but because this is somewhat of a geometry topic, we're not dealing with negative side lengths. So my answer would just be root 87. Let's not round it. Let's leave it exact as root 87. Now, so we did the first part. My suggestion, though, would be to not use root 87 when you're trying to find your angles. Let's use the two sides that were given to us originally. And so let's focus on the angle of y. If I want to find an angle, I'm eventually going to need inverse trig. But based on the two blue sides here, I have the adjacent side and I have the hypotenuse. If you're thinking Sokotoa or right triangle trig, we are going to end up using a cosine here. So we'd have cosine of my angle, remember that the angle is always attached to the trig function, equals adjacent 13 over um, hypotenuse 16. If I want to get y alone, I have to apply the inverse cosine on both sides. So I would get y is equal to the inverse cosine of 13 sixteenths. So this time we're plugging in a ratio and getting out an angle. Please make sure of a few things. Make sure that your calculator, if you press mode, that you're in degrees. And secondly, if you would like to find this angle, remember you're going to press second, and then you're going to press cosine to get the inverse symbolism. If you do that, the value that I got for y was 35.66 degrees. 35.66 degrees. Um, if you would like to find angle Z, there is two ways you could do so. Either you could recognize that you know that a triangle is 180 degrees, so you could just do 180 minus the 35.66 that you just found minus the right angle that we know is there. And if you did that, you would get an answer around 54.34 um, degrees. So you could be done there. You also could look from the perspective of angle Z and still use the 13 and the 16. Again, I would avoid the square root if possible. So you could also do this that I'll squeeze in. You could, so this is opposite and a hypotenuse. You could to do sine of z equals 13 over 16, and then you could take the inverse of both sides. If you do that, you'd still get 54.34 degrees. If I looked at number 12, this time I'm given, I don't have two sides and I do have one angle. Again, I will go alphabetically. Um, again, I know that a triangle is always 180 degrees. So to find X, I could just do 180 minus 90 minus 53 and get the remaining X value, which would be 37 degrees. So we're done with X. If I want to find Y, um, let's use the angle that was given to us originally. Um, and if my goal is to find y, um, it wouldn't make sense to use tangent here because opposite and adjacent are both things I don't know, but I do know what the hypotenuse is. So what if I knew that I had the opposite and I knew that I have the hypotenuse? I could say that the sine of my angle is equal to opposite y over hypotenuse 7. I could do the same thing before I solve this to find z that if I look at this angle again, and I want to use the hypotenuse that I clearly have, and I have the adjacent side here, I could say that the cosine of 53 degrees is equal to adjacent z over hypotenuse 7. Both of these equations are solved the same way. You could put them both over 1. You could cross multiply both of them. This one would get you y equals 7 times the sine of 53 degrees. 
And this one, if you cross multiply it, would get z equals 7 times the cosine of 53 degrees. If you plug those into your calculator, the answers should be 5.59 for y and 4.21 for z. Number 13, from the top of a cliff, which is 125 meters above water, all right, let me draw a right triangle, 125 meters above water, the angle of depression of a boat on the water is 17 degrees. How far is the boat from the bottom of the cliff? So we're trying to find how far the boat is. Let's say the boat's down here um, on the water. We're trying to find this distance from the boat to the bottom of the cliff. The only question is, where is the angle of depression? Um, so I want to remind everybody, again from geometry, that if you have parallel lines and a transversal, these two angles are alternate interior angles, and they are congruent. Now, more of you are familiar with the angle of elevation. Elevation means you're on the ground looking up. This right here is the angle of elevation. So, cool fun fact, if I give you the angle of elevation, I'm also giving you the angle of depression for free because they're alternate interior and they're congruent. So if I ever give you the angle of depression in a problem, feel free to just write that as the same thing as the angle of elevation, which means that if this is 17 degrees, this guy down here is 17 degrees, and so your picture more simply would look like this. The 17 degrees is here, 125 and x, um, so your goal is to find this missing side. Everything depends on the angle. Looks like we have opposite and adjacent, which leads me to tangent. Tangent of my angle is equal to opposite over adjacent. If I want to solve by cross multiplication here, I would get x times the tangent of 17 equals 125. Sorry about it being squished there. If your goal is to get x alone, you're going to divide both sides by the tangent of 17. So if I come up here, my x value is going to be the same as 125 divided by the tangent of 17, which is equal to 408.86 meters. So the reason this one is in the packet is to remind you that the angle of depression and elevation are one and the same. So if you're ever not sure what the angle of depression is, please consider the angle of elevation first. Number 14, a ladder is leaning against a building. Okay, so I have a ladder here that's leaning against a building. The ladder is 12 meters long, so this diagonal length is 12 meters long, and it's sitting on the ground three meters out from the building. So let's say this is the building. That means that this has to be three meters. What is the angle that the ladder makes with the ground? So I'm trying to find this value here, which is pretty much the same thing as an angle of elevation. This time I'm trying to find an angle. The two sides that I have relative to that angle would be the adjacent side here and the hypotenuse here, which makes me think cosine. Cosine of my angle, again, angles are always attached to the trig functions, and the trig functions mean nothing without the angle. Cosine is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. And so if you wanted to isolate the x value, you would have to apply the inverse cosine to both sides of the equation. So x is equal to the inverse cosine of 3 over 12. Yes, that could be 1 fourth if you want it to be. If you do second cosine and plug this into your um, calculator, you would get an answer of 75 degrees and 50 or 75.52 degrees. All right, let's let the good times keep rolling here with some geometry review. Um, use the special right triangles, aka 30, 60, 90, and 45, 45, 90, to help find the following. You want to keep your answers exact, which means I do not, I repeat, do not want you to plug this directly into your calculator. We're looking for the knowledge of your um, special right triangles. So for these two, I notice that I have a 30 and a 60. So I'm automatically going to draw my little 30, 60, 90 triangle. Across from the 30 is the x value. Across from the 60 is x root 3. And across from the 90 is 2x. Um, here, I notice that I have 45 and 45. So if I drew my little special right triangle for this one, I would have um, a 45, 45, 90, which is x 
x, x root 2. So if I wanted to find the cosine of 60 degrees, that means we're looking from this perspective here. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, which in this case, adjacent is x, hypotenuse is 2x. So um, in a general form, my answer is x over 2x, but if I have an x on top and bottom, they cross out. There's really a 1 here, which means my ratio is 1 half. If I would like to find the cosecant of 30, I want to remember that the reciprocal function to cosecant is sine. So what if I found sine first and then I took the reciprocal? Because you might recall that cosecant is of 30 is the same as 1 over sine of 30, or you could say that the sine of 30 is really the same as 1 over cosecant of 30. So what we could do is find the sine of 30 and then just find the reciprocal. So now I'm looking from the degree measure of 30. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, which in this case would be x and 2x again, x, 2x. If I wanted to simplify this, just like part a, the x's would cross out, and my answer would be 1 half. Now remember, this is the answer for sine, which means that cosecant of 30 degrees would be the reciprocal of 2 over 1, or just 2. Part C, the cotangent of 45 degrees. Remember that cotangent and tangent are reciprocal functions. So what I can do first is find the tangent of 45 degrees and then find the reciprocal, like this. The tangent of 45, I could look from either perspective, but tangent is opposite over adjacent, which is x over x, which really reduces to 1 over 1. So if tangent of 45 is 1 over 1, the cotangent of 45, or the reciprocal of 1 over 1, is still 1 over 1, so the answer is just 1. Part D, the sine of 45 degrees, so if I look from either perspective, sine is really opposite over hypotenuse, opposite is x, hypotenuse is x root 2. Now this time, the reason I put this problem in here is to remind you about the rationalizing. If I have 1x over x, the x's cross out, so I have 1 over root 2. But as you might recall, we can't leave a radical in the denominator. So what we have to do is multiply top and bottom, or rationalize, by root 2. So my final answer, 1 times root 2 is root 2, Root 2 times root 2 is root 4, which is really 2. All right, guys, so number 16, we're trying to convert from degrees to radians or radians to degrees. Um, so for part A, I notice that I have 125 degrees, which means if I'm trying to convert it, just like dimensional analysis or factor laboring from chemistry, I know that's your favorite, we need the degrees to cross out, which means if I'm choosing between one of these two, I know that I need 180 degrees on the bottom so that these degrees cross out. I'm only left with radians. So I'm going to have pi on the top. Um, if I wanted to multiply straight across, I'd have 125 pi over 180. I then might notice that I could take a 5 out of both of these numbers. And if I did so, I would be left with 25 pi over 36. That is your final answer, left in exact form. Part B, if I'm given something 7 pi over 5, there is no degree symbol and there is a pi, which makes me think it is in radians. So if I would like to convert that to degrees, I know that I need to pick this one because I want degrees left over and I do not want the radians anymore. So if I multiply by 180 over pi, the pi's cross out and I am left with, let's see, I can cross cancel here. Uh, 5 goes into 180 36 times, so make and make that a 1, make that a 36, and so I'm really left with just negative 7 times 36, which would be negative 252 degrees. Instead of rushing part C, I am going to start the next video with doing 16C, because I feel like this one causes the most confusion anyway. All right, guys, so I'll see you on the next video. Thank you.